uh, great to be starting the Christmas season. It is definitely one of the greatest times of the year, and looking forward to seeing what God has in store for what's left of 2015 and for 2016. If you brought your Bibles tonight, I invite you to turn to Luke, the second chapter, verses 1 through 11. And if you would stand for the reading of God's Word, and if someone would please read Luke chapter 2, verses 1 through 11, and open us up in a word of prayer. <laughs> God bless those pages, Terman. Luke, what was Chapter 2, verse 1 through 11. And it came to pass in those days, there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus, that the all world should be taxed. And this taxing was first made when Cyrenius was the governor of Syria. And all went to be taxed, everyone in his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, out of the city of Nazareth, into Judea. But the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was a house and the lineage of David, to be taxed with Mary, his spouse's wife, being great with child. So it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son, wrapped him in swaddling clothes, made him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the end. How far down with? Till verse 11. And they were in the same country, shepherds, batting in the field, keeping watch over their flock with eyes. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone around about them. They were so afraid. The angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. Yes. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much again for this night. Lord, we ask you to be with Brother West as he brings your message. We ask him, Lord, just to, just to hide him from behind the cross. Lord, he has given the boldness that he needs to preach your word. Lord, if there's one out here tonight that needs to make a decision, this would be the night. We thank you and we love you ahead of time. In the precious name of Jesus, amen. Amen. You may be seated. As many of you know, that's the story there of what happened about two, oh, over 2,000 years ago in Bethlehem. Our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, was born in a manger. He wasn't born in no fancy hospital like a lot of us were born in. And he was not born, not even in a nice house or in like a farmhouse or anything like that. He was born in a manger, a barn, a stable, which was, of course, had animals in it. It was not the fanciest place. And he was born to simple people, born to a carpenter, and he was a, the son of a virgin, one of the many signs of the Messiah that were talked about in the Old Testament about the traits of the Messiah which wound up being Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, like in our uh, Christmas parades that uh, our church has participated in here in Jacksonville in the past few years, the few years we had on our float, he was born to die. Yeah. And that's what he came to earth to do. God sent him, John 3, 16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. God sent Jesus down here to die on that old rugged cross for our sins. See, Jesus, he was born during some rough times. See, Satan was even at work back in them days to try and put a stop to God's plan. Yeah. He didn't just start after Jesus was baptized and went into the wilderness. No, he started <coughs> the very time that Christ was born, whenever King Herod order for all the children, all the boys, two and under, to be slaughtered. And of course, Jesus and his family had to flee Bethlehem. When all that happened, they had to go to Egypt. And the sad thing is, Herod did all of that, slaughtering all those children for nothing. It's just like the Pharaoh, whenever he had all them 
men kill all them babies killed trying to hold on to his power both pharaoh and king herod both eventually died and lost their power and they're sadly in hell to this very day because they never accepted jesus christ as their lord and savior you know they had opportunity after opportunity to where they could but they did not do that the three wise men or you know the shepherds as the bible calls them you know who went to see jesus herod wanted them to come back and tell him you know, about where he was and everything to have him killed it wasn't you know of course herod said he wanted to go worship him but the three wise men knew better you know the lord told them in a dream you know not to go back to herod the wise men went another way and of course mary and joseph and jesus went to egypt like i said a little while ago until after everything was safe and herod was gone they went back up to jesus you know we say jesus of nazareth that's where he spent a lot of time and the bible says later on in luke chapter 2 about how at the age of 12 how he was talking in the temple with the doctors and everything he was very wise and of course jesus did become a jewish rabbi and he will be coming back to earth as a mm -hmm. jewish rabbi see if it wasn't for the jews jesus christ wouldn't be here we wouldn't have the salvation that we have the bible says in john chapter 4 salvation is of the jews that's why satan hates the jews so much that's why people like adolf hitler and all them have rose up throughout history trying to kill off all the jews in the world see satan hates the jews that much and he uses everyone that he can to try and destroy the jews because of all the great contributions they have made to mankind and even to this day satan is still trying to wipe out the jewish people but you know he's not going to win on that Amen. the state of israel and everything it will always stand the jews they are god's people and no matter what satan tries to pull they will not be wiped off the face of the earth mm -hmm. neither will christianity yeah you know they try to kick, kick christ out of christmas and everything but as long as we're here, we're still going to be standing up for Jesus Amen. Christ. Amen. There's still going to be people That's right. throughout the ages standing up for him. Yeah, we may wind up being executed for it. Yeah, with ISIS coming over here, yeah, some of us may wind up dying for our faith. Some of us may even wind up dying in battles against ISIS defending our country. You know, I hate to put it that way, but it's the truth. I've been saying all along, you know, we saw what happened in San Bernardino this week. It's not a matter if we're going to be fighting them over here, it's when. Yeah. It's, you know, things like that are not supposed to happen over here in America. I know we always hear that, but sadly, it can happen over here just like it does overseas. It's like 9 11 and Pearl Harbor. Those things were never supposed to happen, but they did. Of course, as you all know, Pearl Harbor Day is tomorrow. I encourage all of you to be praying for the Pearl Harbor survivors that are still among the living. It'll probably be a rough day for many of them tomorrow. Many of them who lost comrades, family members during the attack and even other battles during the world, Second World War. But america is in big trouble right now and sadly christ is being kicked to the curve even here at christmas time people are trying to kick christ out of christmas you hear all these things like happy holidays and merry xmas you know that's one thing that gets under my skin you know really? happy holidays is one thing but when you start throwing out the merry xmas thing right. that just grinds my gears really? <laughs> that's just because you, you know, you can't have Christmas without Jesus. That's sure, right. you, Amen. Know, you have Santa Claus and all that, but you know what? You can't have Christmas without Jesus. Amen. Yeah, Santa Claus is all fine and dandy. Yeah, he may bring you presents once a year or whatever. I know a lot of you kids out there are looking forward to seeing what all gifts he gets you. But you know, I'll tell you something. If you're out here tonight and you're lost, 
If you don't know Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior, that would be the best Christmas present yeah. we get this Christmas yeah. season. Because it's very different from a little Tonka truck or a little guitar or video games or whatever you want Santa Claus to bring you. Because it never, your salvation from Jesus Christ, once you receive it, never gets old, never wears out. You'll have it forever, never tears up. You'll never get tired of it. Mm -hmm. It'll always be there. You'll mm -hmm. have it for all eternity. Yeah. And you'll have some of the greatest benefits you never asked for. Yeah, you may have a tough time here on this earth. We all do as Christians. This is not an easy life. The Lord said in this world we'd have tribulation. Jesus said that. Mm -hmm. Look at Jesus' life, everything he went through. Mm -hmm. You know, from the time he was born, even into his adult life and his ministry with the disciples, everything dealing with the scribes and Pharisees ridiculing him and then dying on the cross. I mean, it, he had a rough life. Yeah, he accomplished many great things like turning water into wine, walking on water, feeding the 5,000. I mean, he achieved a lot in his life, but he definitely did not have a walk in the park his whole life. Mm -hmm. And neither will us. That's why we have to keep our eyes on Christ. The Bible says in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 to pray without ceasing. We need Christ every day of our lives. Amen. We can't live without him. I don't see how the lost people do it nowadays, mm -hmm. especially with as rough as this world is. And, you know, Brother Ronnie, of course, talked some this morning about the sexual sin, about how that's really hurt America. And I want to share this. It was, you know, this past week we commemorated World AIDS Day. And the other day I went to an assembly over at UALR that they were having for World AIDS Day. And it was very sad because I actually met some of the AIDS victims it was homosexuals and a transgender who had participated in a lifestyle that goes contrary to God's word, and they wound up with the HIV AIDS virus, and they'll have that for the rest of their lives. I told them all, I shook their hands, I told them I'd be praying for them, and just left it at that. But it's very sad just what sin will do to you. See, Satan, he tries to make it all look good and everything. You know, it's sort of like whenever he tempted Jesus with all the kingdoms of this world. Of course, as you know, Jesus turned that down. You can read about Jesus' uh, trip to the wilderness in Matthew chapter 4 after he was baptized and how he fought the devil there for about 40 days, about over six weeks, nearly seven weeks. And it was this very tough battle for him because he fasted all that time without any food or water. But the Lord survived, and he did not give in to the temptation 